In today's video, we're going to paint this beautiful autumn leaf together. It's a really easy watercolour painting idea. I'm going to take you through it step by step. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, you will find all things watercolour, as well as drawing, mixed media, even a little bit of business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So this channel's been doing really well lately. I'm very grateful to all of you for watching my videos. There's been a particular interest in basic drawing videos, but I also want to experiment with other types of content now. In the past on this channel, I've put step-by-steps up and they just don't get watched as much as other content. Now that doesn't mean that some of you don't love them. I know that you do. They get good watch time. In other words, the people that watch them, watch them all the way through. But it's very difficult for me to make that sort of content if I'm not certain that you actually want it. And I'm not guessing about this stuff because you YouTube makes available statistics for YouTube as we can sort of look in the back end. It's called YouTube Studio and it shows statistics on absolutely everything. Click through rate. I can tell who you are, where you're watching. Sounds a bit like Big Brother, doesn't it? I can even tell what sort of devices you're watching me on. And the upshot of all of this is that not many of you are watching the step-by-step -step tutorials, or at least they're not getting as many clicks as other types of video. So I need you to let me know in the comments if you enjoy step-by-steps. I'm thinking of doing some simpler ones, actually. I did sort of longer form content and they don't do as well here. So I put those on Patreon now so people that want full paintings can follow me on Patreon. But I want to do some shorter tutorials on this channel. Really, really simple things, suitable for beginners, or of course, more advanced artists that just want to have a look at the technique I'm using and I was coming out of a car park this week and I found this beautiful leaf so I thought that this week we would do a leaf tutorial we're going to use just three colors I'm going to do it in five steps it's going to be so simple and easy but I think even if you're more advanced you'll still get value from watching how I do the techniques now if you do enjoy this sort of content and you want more of it then you can help me make this video more successful one of the things you can do is share it with other people of course there's the like button all of that but if you share this video and i'm hoping that it being a step-by-step -step, you'll want to share it with perhaps a friend or on a facebook group that you belong to if you share this video then youtube will know that it's a good video and push it out to more people so let's get on now i'm going to go through the materials we need you can paint along with me as I said at the end of the video, I'd love your feedback on this type of content. If it does well and you enjoy it, I'll make more simple step-by-steps. So let's look now at the materials we're going to use for this tutorial. They're really basic and as always, you don't have to have the exact same colours of me. I'll give you some alternatives. So let's look at materials. Now, first of all, you're going to need the uh, leaf photograph. You can use your own leaf, of course. If you want this photograph, I've put it in my Facebook group. So the group has the same name as this channel, or you can just pop down into the video description. You'll find a link there. Join the group, it's free. And then if you go up to media and albums, you'll find an album that I have specifically made for YouTube tutorials, as well as lots of other copyright free photographs that members have shared that you can use. Now, when it comes to paper, this is not the paper I'm using, by the way, this is just a white sheet of paper so you can see the paints and things I hold up. I'll be using Fabriano Artistico, 140 pounds, and I'll have stretched it on to board. You can use any watercolor paper for this painting, but I do suggest stretching your paper or using a block or at least taping your paper down. You'll need a pencil and an eraser. I like to use a soft pencil because it erases easily. This one's a 4B and I've got a little bit of firm putty eraser here. It's not the very soft type. I don't like those really. I don't like the kneadable ones. I prefer to use something a bit firmer like this and just trim the edges if it gets mucky. I'll be doing most of the painting with a brush like this. This is a round brush. This one's a size 10. So a size 10 or a size 12 will enable you to paint most things. If I need to, I'll go down to a slightly smaller brush like this. I'm going to be using three colors for this tutorial. So first of all, I've got a permanent alizarin crimson. This is by Windsor & Newton. Now there are a lot of alizarin crimsons that I don't like much. It can be a very dirty color, but this one actually is a nice bright clear one. It's almost impossible to distinguish it from the talons. I think it's a madder or permanent madder rose, something like that. So you want a pink based red, any kind of madder or deep red. Of course, you could use a scarlet red, but you're going to get a very different look. The next one I'm using is this yellow. Now, don't worry about the fact that it's in a small pot. This is just because I work with this manufacturer and sometimes they send me samples. 
This is nickel titanate. It's similar to lemon, but it has a much less green shade to it. So if you haven't got this, if the only light yellow you have is lemon, I would consider going into a warmer yellow. I think actually you'll get a better result than having that greenish yellow because that's going to deaden your pinks. So you could use a cadmium yellow, a cadmium yellow deep. The leaf itself is kind of has pale yellow on and then where the pink goes over the top, it kind of merges into an orangey sort of colour. So there's nothing to stop you using one of the more orangey yellows. But do avoid yellow ochre. It's far too murky and muddy for this. If your choice is only between, if you've got a beginner set and your choice is only between lemon yellow and yellow ochre, I would personally go with the lemon. And this colour is by Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. So that's Jackman's, not Jackson's. And the final colour I have is by Talon's Rembrandt. And this is an ultramarine deep. There's very little to choose between all the ultramarines, you know, ultramarine deep, ultramarine green shade. For the purposes of this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. So any ultramarine will do. If you haven't got ultramarine, you could use cobalt. You could even add a push, use Prussian blue. We're going to use this colour to produce darks on our leaf and also to mix for the shadow. Finally, and this is optional, I have a couple of watercolour pencils. I have a dark brown one and that must be one of my favourites because there's so little of it left. I have this colour here, which again is a deep crimson pink. You've got a lot of leeway on this actually. I'm going to use these for the leaf veins. You could use anything from a dark green to a mid brown to a scarlet red. I'm going to be using these two colours. If you don't have watercolour pencils, just let your leaf get completely dry at the end and then you can either use an ordinary coloured pencil or a tiny fine brush to paint on your leaf veins. So let's start now with the drawing. Now I'm going to be working from a photograph even though I have the real leaf here. And the reason for that is that I was doing a tutorial the other day and I was working from a real object and the camera was pointing down but I was looking at the object across. So this is what happens if I put the leaf down on the table in front of me and work from it. You'll be viewing it from a completely different angle to me. So I'm going to work from a photograph and I'm going to tell you how you can get hold of that photograph too. Don't worry, it's completely free. I took it myself and I'll make it available for you. So let's look at drawing. Now you can see I've already drawn this leaf. I'm not going to do a full drawing tutorial on this video because it would make the video too long, but I will give you some hints and tips. Now there is the option of tracing. If you do choose to trace, I want you to use the photograph and not an actual leaf. So this is something used to happen a lot when I was teaching real life art classes when we had the subject matter of leaves. I would put a big pile of autumn leaves down and people would grab the leaf and they would sort of press it into their paper and draw around the edge. It seems like a really easy way, doesn't it, of transferring the markings across. But what this actually does is if you look at this real leaf, bear in mind that this has been hanging around my house for about four days now, so it's gone rather brown. You see in the photograph, it's actually quite yellow. You can see that it's very three dimensional. It lifts off the paper. So what happens when you press a leaf flat like this and trace around it is you end up, no matter how good the painting is, you end up with something that looks like a flat paper cutout. So that's a very bad idea. You could trace from the photograph or you can draw by eye. Let me show you a few tricks for doing that. So when drawing a leaf, it's a, it's a really good idea to draw the, um, draw the stem and actually draw the leaf veins. So what you want to do is draw the leaf veins before you draw the outside of the leaf. And you want to be looking at those veins and seeing in which direction they travel. And what this will do is it will enable you to sort of plot out the shape of your leaf. And then once you've got that on, you can actually start, you know, getting an idea of where your leaf goes. And you're using those veins as a map then. And what this will do is it'll get you a really nicely shaped leaf that's much more three dimensional rather than trying to draw around the outside. And if you try and draw around something from one side to the other, going all the way around here, you're bound to go offline and bound to get that wrong. So put your veins in first. And then once that's done, you can go in and sort of sort out your leaf stem, for example. Notice that with a lot of leaves, what you get is you get a little bit, especially if they've come off the plant rather than been cut, you get a little bit of a widening the end there. And then you can start going in and adding more details as you need to. And do be kind to yourself. It's a leaf. It's not a well-known politician. You don't have to get it so that its own mother recognises it. Just make sure it looks like a leaf. Another option, if you're not that confident with drawing, is you could trace the outside. And then once you've got your outside done, you can start putting in 
more of the details, knowing that you have the confidence that you've already got the majority of your leaf correct. Now, if you're new to watercolor painting, I don't want you to do any shading, put anything dark on the paper. And remember that I always have to draw a little bit darker so that you can see it on camera. In real life, you only want to draw as much as enables you to see where to put the paint. So as always with watercolor, we want to work light to dark. So we're going to start with the underwash of our yellow color. So one thing we didn't mention at the beginning was palettes. So usually I like to use a ceramic palette when I can. They just feel a little bit nicer. They certainly look nicer on YouTube than plastic ones like this, which tend to get stained. However, my favorite palette at the moment, which is this three well palette, actually it's not a palette, it's for olive oil and dips, but it works extremely well. This one, as you can see, is being used over on Patreon. This has got gouache in because I'm doing a lavender fields tutorial over there. So this one's not available to me, but I do have this little dish which I can use to mix up large washes. I've also got some paper towel or you can have a rag on hand in order just to take the water out of my brush when I need to. And I've got two water jars just off camera that enables me to rinse my brush in one and have one that's got mostly clean water in. Now I've mixed up a little bit of this color. This was originally wet color, but it has dried to become more like a pan paint and I'm mixing plenty of water in it. Now, unlike a standard flat wash, I am going to vary this a little bit as I apply it because at the edges where the leaf is very, very dark red, I don't want too much yellow under those areas. So what I'm going to do is increase the amount of clean water as I go to the edges. And we're just going to start, I'm going to apply this over the whole leaf. This will ensure that there's no drying lines underneath. So I'm going to start putting it on really quickly, concentrating the yellow in the center, and then coming around to clean water at the edges. Now, when you do this, you want to try and avoid any drying lines forming, which is why I'm going around all of the edges instead of just working over one side, because I need to keep the whole area wet. So I need to keep this edge wet all the time. So I'll go between one area and another. I'm gonna rinse all of the paint out of my brush and carry on with the clean water. And I'm going here with clean water and going back to the yellow. This will ensure that not too much of the pigment is spread across. As I said, trying not to let those edges dry out. You also want to avoid leaving puddles. If there are any areas that seem to be too wet, rather than bashing at them with paper towel, what you want to do is dry your brush and then you can just dot like this and that will pick up any excess water. And we're not going to let this get completely dry. We're going to go straight into the next step. So while the paint is still wet, we're going to work straight in with some watercolor pencils. These are actually optional. You do have other options available to you. You could just apply paint with small paintbrush, or if you've got some pencils that are not water soluble, you could still use them. You could apply them to dry paint. So whilst this is still wet, we're going to take our watercolor pencil in. You see that the watercolor pencil is really very sharp. Now, if you don't have a watercolor pencil and you're planning on going on top, with paint later on and a small brush, or possibly with an ordinary pencil, then you can skip this stage and just allow the yellow to dry. And then you'll want to put those things on right at the end. So you can see here, I'm getting these tiny sharp veins and yet they're still quite soft. This is so much easier than using paint and it gives so much of a natural look. Watercolor pencils can be quite expensive but all of the good manufacturers will sell them individually. So if you're on a budget, I suggest that you treat yourself rather than buy a full set of cheap pencils and the cheap ones really don't give off much pigment. Rather than do that, I suggest that you pop onto one of the online art suppliers or into your local shop and just pick up two or three, a brown, a green and a pinkish red like this will be fantastic for botanicals, possibly a gray too. And you can see here that I'm just taking extra little veins that I haven't drawn. So you need to do this fairly quickly. I'm just gonna make that center vein a little bit thicker. Some of these veins almost have like a double line on them so we can put that in too. Once it gets to the stage where you feel like the paint is starting to dry, then you want to leave it alone. For the next stage, it will need to be bone dry. 
At this point, as always, can I pop in quickly and ask you to click the like button for me. YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment. And subscribing on YouTube is completely free. YouTube will push this video out to more people. I'm trying to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. When I do, YouTube will send me a large silver play button plaque. It's a completely arbitrary piece of plastic, which doesn't really mean anything, and I'd really like to have one. So I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. So next, the fun bit, we're going to go on with the red paint, and I'm gonna show you how to get soft blended edges so that you have lovely effects where the yellow just goes in to the red. So for this next stage, make sure you've got some completely pure, clean water, including your standard water jar. So you're going to need two. What we're going to do is we're going to work in wet on wet. We're going to apply clean water and work the other colours in so that we get a soft edge and it will look like the yellow is just bleeding into the red areas. So I've got my alizarin crimson, I've got my ultramarine and I've got my yellow. Now what we've got here is three primary colours and that means that we can use the yellow as we go between the red and the blue, which could of course make a very strong purple. We can pop a little bit of yellow in and push that more towards a brown. So if we mix these colours together and we've got more of the yellow and the red, we'll have a brownish colour. If we've got more of the blue, we'll have a greyish colour. Something we're going to take advantage of when we mix our shadow colour. So we're going to start on one side and work round. You'll see me do the start and the end of this process. As I go all the way round, it'll just be the same, but it would take, you know, half an hour to film. So I'll show you the beginning and the end. And remember that although I'm keeping my board in one position so that you can see on camera, when you're doing this yourself, you'll want to turn your paper to give yourself the proper access. So I'm going to start off just by putting a layer of red on top of the stem. Anytime I have too much water on my brush, I can just lift it off like this. And the entire process I'm showing you now can be repeated. In other words, if later on you look at it and you think the colours aren't dark or strong enough, you can just repeat the process and put another layer on. Remember that going darker with colours like red doesn't always make them look brighter. So now I've come round back to the main body of the leaf. I'm going to start putting clean water on. I'm not going to apply it over the entire leaf in one go because all that would happen is it would start to dry before I got to it. So we're just going to work around. And now I'm going to go straight in with some of this lovely red colour. And you see how it starts to bleed across. The wetter the paint that I go on second with, the more of that bleeding you will get. So you can control that. If you want less of it, you can just dry your brush and take some of the water out. We're going to come round like this. And, you know, you can put a few little dots in if you want it to be a bit more speckled. Anywhere that you want it darker, just go directly on with more paint. You can also use the blue to get some stronger darks, although those are mostly further up the leaf. Try not to spread the blue too much so that everything becomes purple. Keep cleaning your brush. And then before this edge here has time to dry, you're going to work round with more clean water. Make sure it is clean water and you go from the center outwards so that you're not dragging all of that pigment into the middle and we maintain this yellow. I'm going to continue doing this all the way around the leaf. So I'm coming around towards the end and you see I'm still applying my clean water. When you apply the water, you want to try to not leave puddles. When you have puddles, you'll have drying lines and back runs and just coming around and placing paint where we see it. You'll notice that the paint I go in with isn't that wet. The wetter it is, the more it will bleed. So you can manipulate that, but don't go too wet with it. Otherwise, you'll just have no control over it whatsoever. Where I want it stronger, I can just go in with much neater paint. You'll see in places I've gone over the pencil. You know, don't worry about 100% accuracy. We'll get rid of the pencil lines at the end in any case. You'll also notice I've smudged the stem here with my hand. That's okay, I'll show you how to clean that up in a moment. And as I come down here, actually, I'm really feeling like that stem should be a little bit brighter. I'm pretty sure as well from the beginning of the picture that I have actually um, turned this upside down now. I just need to make sure that you can see adequately on camera. It's quite hard to paint without my hand blocking the lens, which is why I've ended up smudging it over here. So anyway, you don't want a hard edge. Remember just to soften out with water. 
Now, when it comes to smudges like this, the temptation is to go straight at them, but actually it's much better to let them dry and deal with them when the paper is not wet and fragile. I'll show you how to get rid of those marks because you've probably made some of your own too. None of us are perfect when we're painting, so we'll get rid of those just before we put the shadow in. Now, it's really important at this point that your leaf is completely dry. So although it may just appear to be a few seconds on the video, if it means leaving it for an hour, and pausing the video, please make sure you do that because if you paint next to the red area and it's not dry, it's going to bleed across. So I've turned the leaf again so it's easier for you to see. And I've got a piece of masking tape here. Now I've stuck it um, on this sort of granny cardigan that I'm secretly wearing off camera because it's autumn here in the UK. And what that'll do is it'll pick up some lint. So you want to press this onto your trousers, something like that. Make sure that it's about 50% of the usual amount of sticky. And what we're going to do is we're going to mask off the area that we don't want to scrub at. So I don't want to mess up the stem or go near the shadow area. So I'm going to press that on there. Now we've isolated that little smudge. I've got a piece of cotton wool pad, such as a lady might use to take her makeup off with. I had the money back I'd spent on these over the years, I would be very wealthy. And what you can do is just dampen it, but really, really squeeze it out. If you have an issue with arthritis or something like that, and you can't squeeze hard, what you can do is place it between some paper towels and put the heel of your foot on it. So you want it barely damp at all. You certainly don't want it dripping. And then what you're going to do is just come in and it'll work just like an eraser. There are manufacturers that sell something called a magic sponge that does a similar job. I have to say, I find this more effective. And then you've got to remove your tape, always peel it at a low angle to reduce any chance that it tears your paper. Now, not every color will come out. Prussian blue, for example, may not, but you'll lift enough of it that you can do something with it, even if that means putting a background in. What we're gonna do now is mix the shadow color. Shadows on white paper, that are blue or lilac always look fantastic. So what I want to mix here is a sort of lilac based gray. So I've got another dish and I'm starting with clean water. I've got a fair area to cover. So I'm actually putting the water in first. I did that off camera because knowing me, it'll just end up on my picture. I'm gonna now add blue to it. In fact, with an abundance of caution, I've actually moved the painting off camera so that we can mix without worrying about more splatters. So I'm gonna start with blue. So any gray paint is majority blue pigment. I've got quite a lot of water here because I don't wanna run out halfway across my shadow. Many shadows have soft edges, but the shadow in this picture is hard edged. So we want to get across that whole area. So I'm gonna start with my blue. I'm gonna go in then with some red. It's a strong pigment, so be careful. And it'll start to go more towards a purple. An ultramarine already tends towards purple, so you won't need much of the pink. We can try the color out. It's not bad. I think I'd like it a bit more lilac and also a little bit more gray. So I'm gonna put more pink in and balance out with a bit of yellow. Now, the reason I'm not worried about putting a dirty paintbrush onto the yellow there is because the paint has set hard, so I can just rinse that off later on, but never do that on soft paint, obviously, because it'll just push or the dirty color into the middle, you'll have to throw the whole lot away. But being lazy here and trying to stay on camera, I'm not gonna rinse my brush at this stage. So I'm putting bits of yellow in and that will push this more towards a gray color. But I still want it to be fairly bright. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more blue than that. It's really important you get this shadow color right. It doesn't matter if yours is more or less blue than mine, or even if you go fully into gray, but you want kind of, a darkish mid-tone. If you go too dark, it's gonna look very hard and unnatural. If you go too pale, it may not look very interesting. So we're looking for that sort of mid to dark color. I think that's not bad. I actually think I prefer the bluer one a little bit. There's something about ultramarine, which is not a color I use that often, but it looks so beautiful in shadows. Because of the granulation, it looks so pretty. That's not bad. I think I want it grayer, so I'm going to go with more yellow. So at this stage, make sure you like the color. Remember, it'll dry slightly lighter. 
make sure that you've got enough mixed up and then we're going to apply it onto our leaf painting. Really important at this stage that your painting is completely dry. That includes any areas where you might have lifted out smudges. If that smudge I lifted out just now had been crossing the shadow area then I would also allow that to fully dry because wet paint will go to any damp areas so if there's any dampness next to the shadow area your paint's going to bleed across. This poor leaf has been turned in all directions. Now, because we're using ultramarine and it granulates, you might have seen in some of my previous videos, you want to stir this mix as you apply and that'll keep the mix consistent and stop the color from changing as you apply it. I'm gonna start with a small brush. Don't start in the middle of a shadow area. It's really important that you start on one side of an area and work consistently across to the other side. And we're keeping the paint flowing and even without puddles and spreading it nicely along. When I need to go back in, I'm gonna stir. It just picks up any of that pigment that has settled to the bottom of the bowl. As I come around here, I'm going to swap to a larger brush because I need to make sure that this edge here doesn't dry. It doesn't matter what happens to the bit where I started, but this edge here has to remain wet so that we don't get drying lines within our shadow. So keep going back, making sure that you're not allowing any edges to dry. As you come up to the leaf, go very gently along the edge. Be careful here because red is one of the colors that bleeds really, really easily. If this flat wash goes wrong and you end up with a drying line, you can put another layer on and that will help to agitate the underneath layers and smooth them out. So there's my shadow finished. At this stage, you just want to assess if anything needs to be a little bit stronger. I'd actually like to get a little bit um, darker on these veins. What I'm gonna do is just apply my watercolor pencil. I'm gonna dip the tip of it into a water jar. I did this once on camera and a man was so filled with rage that um, he left me a sort of a 15 paragraph comment. Do feel free to do that. It really helps me with the um, with the YouTube algorithm. So just dipping that in the water. So it'll just help to soften and release the pigment. And if you haven't applied your veins yet, if you're doing that in paint or colored pencil, now's the time to do that. You'll see that we have areas of pencil around the edge here. These can be lifted out gently with an eraser, go towards the paint to avoid smudging. And do make sure that it's bone dry. Don't go around that shadow until it's completely dry. I suggest you put it aside for an hour or two before erasing your pencil lines. Now do let me know in the comments what you thought of this tutorial, if there are any other tutorials that you would like me to make for you. Over on Patreon at the moment, I'm doing a gouache tutorial. So there's always that as an option. I know some of you are very interested in learning to paint in gouache, which is opaque watercolors. And of course there's drawing, pen and wash and more. I'm always guided by you on this channel. So do let me know the sort of things that you would like to see. Before you leave this video, don't forget to pop into that video description. I have lots of free downloadable PDFs for you there. I've even got a free watercolor painting course that you can take for no money whatsoever. You'll also find details of my Facebook group, my paid courses, everything else I do in order to support you on your painting and drawing journey because you'll never get good at painting if you don't improve your drawing. The good news is that anyone can learn to draw. You can watch my most popular drawing video right now.